Welcome to this 2020 North Pocono Ecumenical Service. Our thoughts and prayers are with you on behalf of our ministerium. We know it's been a difficult year, but we're all in this together. And though we can't meet in person, we want to share this service with you. So let us share in this ecumenical service. As we come together as a community, know that we are praying for you and knowing that we are, have a lot to be thankful for. A lot in our communities who keep doing what they are doing in the name of the Lord and it is to be a part of such a, a great community. I just want to thank God for the blessings. And as we come here on this November 24th, 2020 at 7 o'clock, I invite you to hear these call to reflection. From Mother Earth, we are fed. From the lives of the bounty, we are blessed. From homes and work, we have gathered here. Come, eat, and fill, and bless you, our Lord and God. May Earth's bounties are given for our nourishment. May we share these gifts and bless our world. And may Earth's bounties are given for all. And again, God bless. And happy Thanksgiving. And know that we are thinking about you and praying for you. From, for you. From the North Pocono Ministerium, God bless. Would you join us now as we welcome the power and the presence of Almighty God. Father, we welcome your presence, your power, your anointing to come and flood our homes with your glory, with your presence. Lord, flood us with your peace. That in the midst of trial, in the midst of tribulation, in the midst of struggle and strife, Lord, you are our hope. You are our peace. Lord, we look to you, giving you all praise and honor and glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.
Wonderful fear. 
We are a forgiven people. Thanks be to God. Hello, happy Thanksgiving. My name is Addie Rocco, and I am at St. Mary's Villa Personal Care Home Chapel, and I am the Director of Mission Integration and Spiritual Care. A reading from Psalm 50. I have no complaint about your sacrifices or the burnt offerings you constantly offer, but I do not need the bulls from your barns or the goats from your pens. For all the animals of the forest are mine, and I own the cattle on a thousand hills. I know every bird on the mountains, and all the animals of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for all the world is mine and everything in it. Make thankfulness your sacrifice to God, and keep the vows you made to the Most High. Then call on me when you are in trouble, and I will rescue you, and you will give me glory. The Word of the Lord.
gospel reading today is from Matthew chapter 15, verses 29 to 39. Jesus feeds the 4,000. Jesus left there and went along the Sea of Galilee. Then he went up on a mountainside and sat down. Great crowds came to him, bringing the lame, the blind, the crippled, the mute, and many others, and laid them at his feet, and he healed them. The people were amazed when they saw the mute speaking, the crippled made well, the lame walking, the blind seeing, and they praised the God of Israel. Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion for these people. They have already been with me three days and have nothing to eat. I do not want to send them away hungry, or they may collapse on the way. His disciples answered, Where could we get enough bread in this remote place to feed such a crowd? How many loaves do you have, Jesus said. Seven, they replied, and a few small fish. He told the crowd to sit on the ground. Then he took the seven loaves and the fish, and when he had given thanks, he broke them and gave them to the disciples, and they in turn to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. Afterward, the disciples picked up seven basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was 4,000 men, besides women and children, and Jesus had sent the crowd away. He got into the boat and went to the vicinity of Magadan. Here ends the reading of our Holy Word. Greetings. It is such a blessing to be here with the ministerium, bringing God's word and God's message to all the community together for the Thanksgiving holiday. As we begin to listen to God's message, let us start with a prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, the Thanksgiving holiday is two days away. Thanksgiving is such an important holy day, yet it is always getting overlooked or shall we say it goes unnoticed because there's so much overcrowding of other events that are around it. Usually Thanksgiving is overrun by Christmas displays, Black Friday flyers, and media consumerism. It often gets celebrated for the wrong reasons and its effects are short-lived. Normally, people are looking forward to the big parades and stuffing themselves with turkey and the fixins, football games, and naps. They say the more we get, the less we appreciate God. The more unthankful we become, the less mindful of God we are, and the more we want. Some might say, what they are thankful for around the dinner table as they do gather for Thanksgiving. Then, by evening, persons are quick to change their mind because they grab those flyers and they make lists of everything that they want for Christmas. They forgot that they just realized and said and celebrated that they have everything that they need and gave thanks for it. How quickly, again, they forget that they have all they need and what they're thankful for. It happens, unfortunately. Being grateful and Thanksgiving Day, there are two things that actually seem to be passed over completely or pushed aside anymore. This year, everything is different. The world around us, society, how we interact has changed, mainly due to the coronavirus pandemic. Many families will be celebrating differently, 
having smaller house gatherings, and connecting with family and friends through technology. Thank the good Lord for technology in these days. Or maybe they will connect through phone calls. There's a quote on social media now that's out there that says, 2020, it is the year that we have to appreciate everything we have because it isn't the year that we are going to get everything we want. We might be making sacrifices that are hard or upsetting, although we are doing our part to remain safe. And we, be, we are doing our part to remain safe and to stay well for ourselves and those that we love. Prayers for everyone as each of us roll through and manage ourselves through the temporary modifications. Perception, it makes a big difference in how we journey through the unknown and the known circumstances of any season. Our inner attitudes are to be of a joyful nature because of Christ. So our inner attitudes then are not to be affected from the circumstances around us. For me, Thanksgiving is my holiday to host with lots of family, baking and cooking, and special moments, I treasure it. But this year I had to come to the conclusion that I couldn't host my normal gathering. So it, it hurts me short term, but long term, it's all for the best. For those making these decisions and for those who will not be traveling to their traditional destinations, we have to look at all of this from a thankful lens, such as I'm not stuck at home, I'm safe at home. The old saying goes, there is always something to be thankful for. Hopefully, we all are thankful and that we will definitely make thanksgiving of God our priority, our number one priority, as we gather and connect in any fashion for thanksgiving and completely center ourselves where we need to be centered, on our God. Some will move right along as normal for Thanksgiving. Like my brother, for instance, he says it's his favorite holiday because he said, I just have to show up wherever and be thankful, of course. And for him, Thanksgiving, he said, it's just, it is a day of gratitude. There are no to-do lists, there are no presents, no resolutions or candy, just simply being content and praising God. There are various rooted dates of the history of Thanksgiving. It has been celebrated on and off in America since 1789. Originally, it was called a harvest festival. Yet, what is known as the true first Thanksgiving of America that originally said to have happened after the Pilgrims' first harvest in 1621. And it lasted for three days, three days of rejoicing. In 1863, then, Abraham Lincoln deemed this a federal holiday on giving thanks and praise to our beneficent Father who dwelleth in the heavens. These are merely a few known roots of the holiday. No matter the exact inauguration of the who and the what or when of this special day, we focus on the recognition of it as an act of worship, with an attitude of worship to the Lord. That has always been agreed upon by all folks. Reverent, in correct atmosphere, 
Thanksgiving is to be a noticeable act of praise, personal and public. Appreciation, prayer, worship, lifted all as a pleasant and amazing offering. Now delving into our gospel reading, with Jesus, his first called disciples, and the crowds of people, one can sense as we hear that reading that there was gratefulness in the atmosphere. Jesus had been in healing mode. People were coming to Jesus, bringing vast number of people that were in need of his healing touch. Those that had illnesses and diseases, people brought these people to Jesus' feet and laid them there, and Jesus healed every one of them. The air was filled with an essence of being thankful and living anew through the compassionate actions of Jesus. Scripture reads, the people were amazed when they saw the mute speaking, the crippled made well, the lame walking, the blind being able to physically view God's creation like never before. And they all praised God. If they thought that they would be amazed by this, they could not have imagined their amazement for Jesus in what was going to happen next. In the midst of everything, there are the disciples. These poor guys, sometimes they couldn't catch a break. As Jesus turns to them and basically says, hey, we need to feed all these people. They're hungry. I can't send them away like this. And they might collapse along their way as they leave. And if that happened, what would have been the sense in Jesus healing all of them? We couldn't let them go away, Jesus said to them. So Jesus, he's looking at his disciples to produce enough food to feed thousands of people. It's not the first time that he's done this. And just like the first time he did it, they are perplexed. They're bewildered thinking, how on earth are we going to accomplish this task? These disciples, like disciples in any era, here we could say, how easily disciples forget, throw their hands in the air when faced with difficult decisions or circumstances. All disciples, in our humanness. We forget that if God has taken care of us before in the past, God will always be there and take care of us. In the context of the gospel reading with these disciples, here was their problem. They were thinking, how on earth are we going to accomplish this? They wouldn't have accomplished it with anything on earth couldn't have. This called for an out-of-this-world, heavenly, God-infused miracle, and that is exactly what occurred with seven loaves of bread and a few small fish. There had to be a channel which God could work through to transform little into much, and of course that's Jesus. However, there's another key factor here in Jesus' actions. The first thing that Jesus did with this seemingly scarce amount of food that was given to him was lift it to God and give thanks. He gave thanks to God. And from there, he handed it out to the disciples and they passed it around to these thousands of people. Not only did they all eat and were satisfied and content, they had seven basketfuls of leftovers. The importance of giving thanks to God 
is immeasurable. It makes the impossible possible. Thanksgiving Day is a miraculous holiday that cannot be overlooked. It too calls for more than one day. We need to be thankful and rejoice every day in all circumstances, for God is near. We cannot let anxiety creep into our Thanksgiving celebrations. That would defeat the festive purpose. If we feel any anxiety coming on this week, remember to worry less and pray more. Prayer is powerful. Follow the way of scripture in every situation. By prayer and petition, present your request to God. With a mindset of gratitude, lift your concerns to God. What will transpire? The peace of God will come in abundance. It will be abundant. The peace of God is much more than the world's definition of peace. It transcends our understanding, yet we know that it is so rich in trust and faithfulness, and it protects our hearts in Christ Jesus. God's peace, it brings a sense of sincere calmness and tranquility of self and in relationship of the cross that the world cannot give. It is unchanging and it is permanent with recognition that our Lord is in control. In our Lord, we do have all we need. In necessities to nourish and uphold us from the one who created all the earth and every last fraction of it, all that is in it and us among all of humankind. And in believing the greatest offering of all, the promise of forgiveness and of hope of living alive forevermore. With all of this in mind, maybe this year it would be encouraging to start a new tradition of making a thanks living list and put these lists aside and bring them back out every year to see how life is moving along and how God is working in our lives. I'm certain that all of our thanks living lists would have much more than material objects on them, the stuff of the world. Our collective lists, they would surely include family, friends, health, wholeness, security, also our church families, and the shining, flowing, everyday blessings that God bestows upon us. And atop of our list, our assured redemption. With Jesus, we do have that great abundance to celebrate. Lift thanksgiving to God and simply enjoy being near to the Lord without doing anything. Spend precious time with your Savior this holiday, ever knowing in thanksgiving there is healing peace that is so needed. Peace that produces a state of appreciation of faith, a peace that gently falls on us as we submit our whole lives to that complete trust in God. Instead of that one day of year, we may then indeed let us live every day with a consistent pattern, a routine of thanks living. Each of us, let us live our lives as walking, talking Christian testaments of God's merciful grace let us breathe, 
breathe life into God's word, enabling then, in turn, empowering others to live their lives in the way of holiness. Not just say or participate in what they may know as grace before a meal, but to know and rejoice truly in God's limitless, undeniable love of grace. So no worries this week. If you think there won't be enough turkey or pumpkin pie, God's blessing will be upon your food and your fellowship. Discover heartfelt appreciation in memories of past that you hold dear. In devotion, maintain strength and patience for the present and allow faith to bring you inspiration for the future. Reach out and connect in creative, unique remembrances for such a time as this. May each of us raise praise and glory to our God for what we have and not be ungrateful for what we think we are lacking. May we all enjoy the plentiful pastures of joyful harvest that are gifted to us from our God, from our God to God's people who we are together as one in the spirit. Happy and blessed Thanksgiving to you all. Amen. Good evening, church. As we come to this time of giving, I'd like us to uh, reflect on uh, Paul's take on the importance and value of giving. And I'd like to read to you out of Acts chapter 20. It says in verse 35, In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words of the Lord Jesus himself said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. When Paul had finished speaking, he knelt down with all of them and prayed. They all wept as they embraced him and kissed him. And a little context and background about this passage. You see, it was during these times, Paul was heading with a gift of offerings that he had collected all throughout the churches in Asia Minor. And all of these Gentile churches had donated and given of their hard-earned money to the believers in Jerusalem who were in the middle of a very uh, terrible famine. And he, they were there and they were struggling and they were dying and starving. And Paul considered this a, uh, an amazing opportunity for the church to show its unity and solidarity with one another. He implores in 1 Corinthians 16 the church to plan ahead and strategically give to show what Christ is doing in their hearts by their generosity in giving to the Jerusalem church. Paul, and this is the craziest part, Paul heads to Jerusalem knowing that there are people that are out to get him there, that are out for his head, out for his arrest. And uh, every time the Spirit speaks to Paul, it tells him, hey, there's going to be trials and jailings and chains and beatings ahead. And the believers here in Acts chapter 20 and we just read, they're distraught over this, and they're upset, and they're so uh, just overwhelmed with sorrow, knowing that their faithful brother in Christ is going to lay uh, his life into the, give his life into the hands of those that would try to harm him. Why did Paul care so much about this offering? And I've spoiled the answer already. It's because he viewed it as a symbol of unity of where the church is. He believed that one of Jesus' core missions when he was on this earth was to uh, embrace and to help out those that are in need. The orphan and the widow and the poor and the needy and the sick. Jesus went around healing and giving of himself. 
giving uh, funds and resources to these people. And the early church, if you look, they did the exact same thing. Setting up these help programs uh, and and relief programs where the Romans couldn't care less. The church made a difference. And Paul believed that as the churches came together in unity with this offering, it would reveal the attitude and heart of Christ. Today, as we take this offering in Thanksgiving, we in the Moscow area have a chance to be unified with our donation. We have the chance to be unified with one heart under the name of Jesus Christ, whom we all serve, to give. And not to help people in a faraway land, but to help people right here in our backyard. To help people that need it so much that serve or that receive from the dry goods and the food pantries. Many of you watching this have been in a position where you have received and benefited from these pantries as well. And you know the amount of hope and the peace and the life change that can come from receiving a blessing. Perhaps now is an opportunity for you to give. And as Paul's concern, it is the truth that I know that it's more than just about the money, the, the funds and the money. God can provide those things. What's more important is your heart in the matter. The importance is your priorities in this life. If you're living a generous life or a selfish life where we store things up for me alone, may our hearts be softened this Thanksgiving to give. In the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Well, as you see the text pop up on your screen, I encourage you to give right now. And there'll be an opportunity for you to set up a one-time text to give option. And uh, that money will go through my church, Crossroad Assembly, but will go right to our uh, pantries, the dry goods and the food pantry. This Uh, Thanksgiving season as they prepare for their big Christmas outreaches. Your donation will go a long way into seeing families have the confidence and the peace in this very busy and often challenging time of year. Would you bow your head with me as you seek in your heart what you desire to give, what God wants to give through you, and take an opportunity to bless those that are in need this Thanksgiving. Would you bow your heads? God, we thank you so much that you bless us so fully. God, you give us so much. God, may we have eyes to see the blessings that you give us. May we realize and internalize the true fruit of your spirit working in our lives. God, may it not stop there with our gratefulness and our thankfulness, but may may that attitude overflow into generosity as we are generous to those around us. God, our brothers and sisters in Christ, our neighbors, Lord, those are in our community. May we be generous there because that is your heart as well. All of creation is a sign of your generosity. God, your acts through Christ on this earth is a sign of your generosity. May we even emulate that in a small way that we can by giving so that others may have food, that others may have the needs and the the resources to take care of themselves and live a full life. God, bless us today and challenge our hearts to be generous, not just this holiday season, but every single day. We love you, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Amen. Happy Thanksgiving from Crossroad, from me, Pastor Aaron, and uh, God bless. As we come to a time of the litany of thanksgiving, I invite you after our beginning moments in the moment of silence to think and reflect on the things that you personally are thankful for. And then we will enter the response. After each thing I say, I invite you to join me with, we thank you, Lord. Great and gracious God, you created all things from galaxies to grasshoppers, and yet you are mindful of humanity and provide for us. Lord, we praise you and we thank you. breath of life that fills us each day. We thank you, O Lord. 
for the beauty and wonder of your created world. We thank you, O Lord. For the food and drink which fills our bodies, we thank you, O Lord. For our minds full of brilliance, creativity, and thoughtfulness, we thank you, O Lord. For people created in your image, O God, we thank you, O Lord. For the blessing that is communities of love and care, we thank you, O Lord. For our health, and for those health workers who treat and guard us in our sickness and ailments, we thank you, O Lord. For the ability to learn and grow in our understanding of you and our world, and for educators dedicated to the holy work of teaching, we thank you, Lord. For times of work and times of rest, we thank you, Lord. For all those who proclaim the gospel and do your work in the world, we thank you, Lord. For those who show perseverance in adversity and those who care for the hurting, we thank you, Lord. For the gift of the words of scripture, we thank you, O Lord. For the greatest gift of the word made flesh, Jesus Christ, his teaching, love, sacrifice, and resurrection, we thank you, O Lord. Lord, this day and every day, may we be thankful for all the many gifts you have given to us. This we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, giving thanks to God. Amen. Please be in the attitude of prayer. Ever faithful Lord, ever giving Son, ever present Spirit, for the many gifts you give us and the opportunity to enjoy these gifts, for our daily provision and for the constant signs of your healing love, for the hope in its despair and the light which always shines. For all these things, thank you, is just so inadequate. But it's all we have. It's all we have to show our gratitude in word, in thought, and in action. So thank you, Lord. And may our thanks move beyond words to transform us into a thankful people, a faithful people, a seeing people, people who see a need and see the need to act. People who love to live and live to love. People who serve you by serving others. Help us to be the amongst those who include the excluded and bring in those who are marginalized, that when the opportunities come our way to be healers of division and hurt, to be peacemakers and restorers, we won't be found wanting. Loving, personal Father, we bring before you those people and issues that are closest to us, that occupy our minds and our hearts at this time. Mighty, wonderful Father, we bring before you people and issues from around our world, including those we'll never know personally, but who remain our sisters and brothers in you. Transforming, healing Father, help us to make the light shine in dark places, to make peace known in violent places, and to bring hope to despondent places. Our prayers, spoken and silent, are brought to you now in a moment of silence. In the name of your Son, Jesus, the healer, includer, and redeemer forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, in a year of struggle and in a year of unpredictable events, we know that your loving providence remains with us. As we gather here digitally in a different way, we know that your spirit unites us. We ask that you continue over these holidays and as we approach the feast where we celebrate the birth of your son, that you pour your love out to us to give us the confidence and the hope of your abiding presence with us. We ask that you bless all of those who struggle. We ask that you receive the souls of all of those who have died this year. We ask that you give us a renewed hope that as we bring this year to a close and anticipate a better year to come, we will always be mindful of your abiding presence with us. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.